quantum physics is by far the most mysterious branch of science to this day, with potentially the most expansive and groundbreaking implications of all areas of research. How is it that one branch of study alone inspires humanity to philosophize about the inner workings of the entire universe, leading our musings all the way down to the deep, dark caverns of the subconscious mind? The realms of mystery fractal out from a single subatomic particle and make us question everything we think we know about ourselves and the very nature of reality. With fascinating developments in quantum research over the last 20 years, this field is ripe for curious minds to pioneer analytical conclusions and data synthesis. Quantum physics carries deep implications in all aspects of our lives, and the interest in this subject grows exponentially in the last few years. As research continues to advance, the picture comes into greater focus. As the pieces of the puzzle are synthesized, this enables us to recognize and integrate our own quantum reality. This video series seeks to explore the bridge between quantum physics and the science of consciousness, catapulting our understanding of self and the universe in which we live to the next level. Quantum physics just might be the very glue that holds science and spirituality together. This is Science of the Quantum Universe. Quantum Physics Quantum is a discrete quantity of energy proportional in magnitude to the frequency of the radiation it represents. Physics is the exploration of the structure of matter, energy, and motion, and how the fundamental parts of the universe interact. In other words, the science of how the universe works. On one hand, classical physics studies matter, or any substance that has mass and volume and takes up space. These objects are made up of atoms, which are comprised of subatomic particles. On the other hand, quantum physics studies a deeper level of reality, including massless particles such as light, and sound. The next question becomes, what is quantum theory? Quantum theory is the scientific theory of the nature and behavior of matter and energy on the atomic and subatomic level. So, in a normal sense, matter exists in the phases solid, liquid, gas, or plasma. And the atomic makeup looks like protons and neutrons floating in a cloud around a nucleus. But when we get down to the subatomic level, the black and white conclusions begin to blur into a very mysterious shade of gray. But I'll give it to you straight. This is what we seem to know at this moment in time. The four major components of quantum mechanics are, number one, the quantization of some physical properties. Number two, quantum entanglement, which means that regardless of distance, the state of paired particles are perfectly correlated. Number three, the uncertainty principle, which means that it's impossible to measure the position and velocity of an object simultaneously. Number four, wave particle duality, which means that these quantized components of energy sometimes function as a particle and at other times function as a wave. Okay, so we've laid the foundation of quantum theory. Let's dive deeper now into the basic nature of quantum mechanics and a super important factor that comes in when we assess the bridge between the science of quantum theory and the science of consciousness. It all begins with one question. What is light? Light is electromagnetic radiation across a spectrum of frequencies. Each frequency has a respective wavelength and photon energy associated to it. There are many different wavelengths of light spanning from gamma rays through X-rays, ultraviolet, visible light, infrared and microwaves to radio waves. Light is measured by wavelength or frequency. Wavelength is the distance a light wave travels between two successive peaks or troughs measured in nanometers. The frequency is the number of waves the light passes a given point per second measured in hertz. The higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelength and the lower the frequency, the longer the wavelength. For example, gamma rays are high frequency with a short wavelength, and radio waves are low frequency with a long wavelength. 
The visible light spectrum is perceived by the human eye as different colors. Violet is high frequency with a short wavelength, and red light is low frequency with a long wavelength. A photon is the quanta, or smallest form of measurement, of light. History of quantum physics. So now, let's go back in time and watch how this story develops so that we can understand one particular central concept in quantum theory that seems to impose extremely mysterious ramifications on our understanding of consciousness. Let's go back to 1670, when Sir Isaac Newton, physicist and astronomer, investigated optics, developing theories about light and color. Newton's argument was that light is composed of particles refracted by acceleration into a denser medium. Newton had a deep interest in hermetic principles, which stemmed back to ancient Egyptian teachings about particle attraction and repulsion. He believed that a force named the ether was responsible for the transmission of forces between particles. His research of optics was inextricable from his passion for and obsession with the art of alchemy. During the same time, Christian Huygens, a Dutch physicist and inventor, was busy discovering the very first moon of Saturn, Titan, among other awesome things like inventing the pendulum clock in 1656, and speculating about the existence of extraterrestrial life on planets in our solar system, research which would end up being published after his death in 1698. So back in 1678, soon after Newton had developed his particle theory of light, Christian Huygens theorized that light was a longitudinal wave transmitted through an omnipresent ether. In his view, the nature of light was like that of sound, which moved in waves. It wasn't until 1773 with the birth of Thomas Young that the debate about light being a wave or particle would be taken to the next mysterious level, perplexing even the greatest minds from that point forward. Thomas Young made significant contributions in the field of Egyptology, decoding six crucial ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic symbols, unlocking the ability for scholars to decrypt the entire language before turning his attention to optics in 1803, wherein he established the wave theory of light. How did he do this? By conducting what became known as the double slit experiment. He took three sheets of cardboard and spaced them out upright with space in between, and then placed a light at the end. He covered the light with a green lampshade, which prevented any color other than green from passing through. This ensured that only one frequency of light, in this case green, could be transmitted through the slits in the cardboard. He thought that by blocking all other frequencies of light, that it would prevent the different colors of light from refracting off of each other and creating an interference pattern that you would see with waves. Forced through the two slits in the cardboard, he found that the light appeared on the back piece of cardboard as a wave, indicating that there was indeed interference of the waves which showed up as an interference pattern. If the light had functioned as a particle, you would have seen two distinct columns of light on the far wall of the cardboard, indicating that the particles of light passed through the slits and landed on the cardboard with no interference. It seemed as though the results agreed with Huygens' theory that light actually functioned as a wave. Everything was falling into place so nicely. Well, that is until J.J. Thompson came on the scene. 50 years later, the physicist J.J. Thompson was born in 1856 and eventually went on to discover the first subatomic particle, the electron. He figured out how to isolate a single photon and then performed Thomas Young's double slit experiment, but this time observing the path that the photons took through each slit. He found that even though the photons seemed to randomly pass through the left or right slits, the overall calculation found that 50% of the time, the photons passed through the left and 50% through the right. After performing the experiment, Thompson found that the pattern that the light made on the back wall demonstrated that the light was functioning as a particle. Instead of the interference pattern he expected to see, there were two columns of light, indicating that the light was functioning as a particle. This is where things get weird. When Thompson ceased to observe the experiment, the light functioned as a wave and exhibited the interference pattern on the screen. This demonstrated that on a quantum level, human observation seemed to have an effect on the way that light behaved. When we observe the light, it functions as a particle, but without detection, the light goes on functioning as a wave. This paradox of nature is called wave-particle duality. This event of observation is called wave function collapse, where the wave of light transforms and is absorbed as a photon, collapsing the wave into a single location. 
a point in space and time. Here, the photon arrives. And this is just peeling away the first layer of mystery into the unknown world of quantum reality. What is it about our consciousness that, when interfacing with light, collapses the wave into a particle? What is it about the mechanism of the human body that evokes such a baffling result? Thomas Young, the man who threw a wrench in the machine of what we thought we knew about how the world works, said in 1807, the nature of light is a subject of no material importance to the concerns of life or to the practice of the arts, but it is in many other respects extremely interesting. But little did Thomas Young know how that would change when J.J. Thompson would come into the quantum physics picture later and prove that the nature of light was far stranger than initially expected. Could Young have been wrong in the end? Could the nature of light actually be a subject of great material importance to life and the arts, not merely a distraction of fancy, but instead a key into the depths of our own immortal nature? Could the discoveries of quantum theory have dynamic spiritual implications on us as human beings in this world? How might our conscious awareness be embedded within the laws of the quantum universe? Like Sir Isaac Newton once said, to myself I am only a child playing on the beach while vast oceans of truth lie undiscovered before me. Stay tuned for the next installment. All around us are pieces of the gigantic cosmic puzzle. Let's attune to its frequency. This is Science of the Quantum Universe.